uh, UK, a lot of these countries, Mexico, they, they they come out and they say there is UFOs. They they have proof of it, mm -hmm. but in this country they don't exist, and uh, that's at least what the government <laughs> says. But then you have all these other officials, you know, like the ex prime minister of Canada even said that there was UFOs. Yeah, you know, and and uh, first lady of Japan. Yeah. First, another one. So that kind of makes me wonder, are we, are we being controlled maybe by aliens a little bit nowadays? I don't know. You know, uh, maybe I'm getting too far out there. I don't know. Well, like that, um, that I, I might be mispronouncing his name, uh, David Icky or David Ike or David Ike. I think. Ike? David Ike, I think. I-C-K-E, it's spelled... Uh, he, you know, wrote all those books about how uh, the rep, the rep, I, I mean, it, they, it sounds silly saying all this, but um, how the reptilians are shapeshifters and they're, they're um, posing as Queen Elizabeth and, you know, Obama and, you know, um, uh, what's that guy, Tony Blair, and I, I don't know if you've heard any of this conspiracy it's 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 funny uh but is it are he he actually is has made quite a point like who this inner circle of um you know elite uh are are they really just alien are they aliens are they from a are they hybrids are he, he does make a good point and uh I know it sounds kind of silly, but it makes me wonder. And uh -huh. um, I thought I'd I thought I'd bring it up. A lot of people actually believe believe in uh, that. They believe the reptilians are here on Earth, posing as as human beings in uh, high places. It's a poss You know, it is a possibility. I mean, you know, again, I mean, I have no proof one way or another. I mean, you know, I. If it happened, I would say, gee, you know, it's a possibility. That's all I can say. But uh, when you really think about it, I mean, the way things have been going, it seems like we're being stirred, uh, stared, uh, directed. Okay, I'm going to use the right word. Directed in a funny direction. And uh, that's what's got me concerned. Um, I don't know if you or your um, listeners believe in new world order or not? I would say most of them would because this is a paranormal radio show. So, I mean, you yeah, know, uh, I mean, if, but I, I would say yes. Um, well, I mean, a lot of people think that the rep, the reptilians are part of the Illuminati. And um, I was reading this uh, really interesting article today. I don't know if you've ever heard of, this new religion called interfaithism. No, I have not. Well, it's it's terrifying because the Pope, the Catholic Pope, uh, you know, the last huge Christian organization that we have in this country, has been kind of tipping his hand towards, um, you know, maybe Catholicism isn't the only way. we got to start t tolerating other religions, which is, contradicts what the Bible says. But um, anyway, I was reading this article about interfaithism, and it's um, taking over by storm. It's a, a, becoming a, a world religion, uh -huh. which is kind of scary because that's one of the things you know, Karl Marx wrote about we've got if we're gonna take over the world in a in a communistic kind of government, we've got to get rid of religion. That's a must. There's too many of them, too many different um, beliefs. And I just I always go back to him. I always go back to Machiavelli. Um, we are becoming a one world government, and uh, this article was chilling because if all of these religions go away, and this is all we've got left is interfaithism, the government, I mean, what's left? A, just one, a one world government. And, um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm spinning right now. I, I'm, I'm, uh, 
And, I, get, I just read this article and I got very worked up. Well, it sounds like, you know, there was a movie and I can't think of the name. Fahrenheit something. Fahrenheit, uh, I got it. Fahrenheit, yeah. Fahrenheit 411 or with yeah. uh, Ray Bradbury. Yeah. Where they yeah. burn all the books. Burn all the books and how the government was run and, you know, that uh, it was run. You know, and that's, I, I hate to say it. I kind of get that, you know, that maybe that movie was way, way ahead of its time. Yeah. I, it, it's it's just scary, and uh, this you know, um, this whole open border. Let's let everybody in. Let's mix everything up. Let's mix the bag up. Um, again, preparing for a one world government, and uh-huh. I, I do think that there's a, a, a aliens play a part in this somehow. Um, I know we talked about Hollow Earth and um, Hitler and all of that, but. Um, one of his biggest beliefs, the, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the occult that he belonged to, the, the real society. Yeah, a little bit, yes. Well, his whole entire belief is, is set up on these aliens, which, which sound kind of like reptilians, that live in the hollow earth. Uh-huh. And um, it's from this book called The Coming Race. Uh, and... The aliens are called Brillia, and they possess this power source called Brill, and that's what he called his his society, the Brill Society, based on a novel. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's crazy. Well, I, I, and and that's when you go back to you know supposedly uh, the secret base that the the Germans you know built uh, in Antarctica, and. Uh, it, it that's that's you know maybe they did run across a, a alien you know a base and and uh, but the only way I, I still like ask somebody we talked about it the other night on the show but then if uh, the Germans ran into a alien race right and they were given Germans all this technology that I I asked the guest I said well, then why did they let them lose the war. I mean, undoubtedly, they would have had enough technology where uh, yeah, Hitler's military, with the right type of stuff, could have uh, ended the war in their favor instantly. Well, that maybe Hitler messed it up. He he. Um, obviously, that whole Russian thing was a disaster. Right. Uh, or maybe there was an uh, there was another goal in this whole thing. Let's um, make Israel a country again. Uh Uh-huh. Some some kind of um, divine creator is um, trying to set up the globe for uh, like a risk game or something. I I, I mean, I'm not really sure. There's got to be a lot of reasons. And it, it... this war made America a huge superpower, the most powerful country ever. Oh, it did. It... You know, it also changed America as a whole because, you know, America before World War II, uh, we were just like on a little island. I mean, you know, we were just, you know, we weren't involved anywhere, really. I mean, you know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, after World War II, all of a sudden, the United States became a, uh, I hate to say it, a police uh, uh, country where we, you know, had to put our in- influence, our way of life on every other country we could, you know, talk to or, you know, get our foot into one way or or the other. Yeah. We just became, um, that annoying country that has to have, uh, some kind of say in everything. And I, I can see why so many people don't like us. Um, I guess, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a fan of foreign aid. I'm not a fan of, um, you know, putting our nose in everybody else's business. I think that causes more harm than good. Um, but that was uh, one of the byproducts of World War II, so. Yeah. But, you know, when people talk, you know, that's what I don't understand, people, you out there, people, how everybody can just tolerate, you know, our country, right? If you're a senior citizen 
or you or whatever disabled or you got a problem it seems like they're taking everything away from you you know making it harder for you to live and but yet we can turn around and give billions of dollars out to other nations when we yeah. should we should be thinking about our own people i mean we could have a country mm-hmm. so beautiful and yeah. it, it, and they're not, and I don't understand it. I, you know, I just don't, I don't understand the philosophy. Right. I'm not a politician, but uh, it, a lot of the politicians are politicians. I don't even think they're a politician. I, I won't tell you what I think about some of them, but yeah. uh, even like, you know, it, it, when you go back to like when Carter was elected, you know, he said he was going to come out because he supposedly had uh, an encounter with a UFO or saw one. He said he was going to get all their information when he was running for uh, president and he would release it to American people. Well, guess what? It never happened. And, uh, you know, one time, I guess he was on a plane and somebody asked him about it and he turned, you know, funny color and he says, I can't talk about it. Then you have other presidents, you know, like, uh, well, Hillary's husband, Bill, Bill, you know, they they both said they were going to say stuff. And then when they get it as the president, nothing came out. Yeah. And then the JFK files, well, this was the perfect time. Why didn't um, they release, uh, I mean, he there had to be something about Roswell in there. Oh, yeah. And that didn't, you're absolutely right. Why, why are we covering it up? And other countries are um, starting to talk about how, how they saw this and they got this information. And you're absolutely right. Why are we hiding it? Yeah, that's that's the scary part. And even go, you just mentioned Roswell, you know, the standpoint there, right? Uh, it's supposedly a alien spaceship crashed. You have the person who's like second in charge uh, of the news or actually in charge of the news media for the base, right? Come out on national news and say that a spaceship crashed a UFO. Then the next day, the story changes. No, it was not a UFO. It was a weather balloon. But meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, all these little people, like the the, the police chief, uh, a fireman, um, the mortician, had seen these alien bodies, right? Their stories yeah. didn't come out to they were near their deathbed. But all of a sudden, they started saying that, you know, they were uh, greeted at their house by government officials saying if they said anything, them and their family would disappear. So, I mean, yeah. if it was a weather balloon, why would somebody be knocking at your door and say, hey, you can't talk about this anymore or else? Yeah, then what, didn't, didn't the military confiscate four uh, child coffins, child-sized coffins? Oh, yeah. Right after? Yeah. It, yeah, they, that was suspicious. It, yeah, they came in and uh, from the mortician, and you know, the mortician claims he saw the bodies. Uh, you know, so this, this makes makes you wonder. Okay, you know, all I can say is okay. I feel there has to be because I saw something in the seventies that I can't explain. But if I sit there and, and and tell myself there's no other life on any other planet, then I'm a bigger moron than I think I am. I agree. Yeah. I mean, how conceited. There's all these, we're finding more and more planets each year. Oh, yeah. And how conceited to think that we're the only ones that have life. It's, it's so arrogant. Well, yeah. And then you have like this attorney uh, up in, I think in the Seattle area, who claims that when he was a kid, he was abducted into the government uh, on their program for, uh, advanced space travel and they you know went to like mars and all that stuff and he's supposedly he's it was in the news even today he was talking about that uh uh, that he saw alien uh martian bodies you know in a big uh grave you know in uniforms and all this stuff uh you know and here's somebody who's an attorney now i guess he could be a crackpot but uh it's this how can I say it? I mean, I'm, how can you, you know, I, yeah, I, I, it makes it hard to believe or disbelieve because what you read, you know what you're reading is not true, a lot of it. So, I mean, 
are we way more advanced space-wise uh, than we act to be, you know? 